Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this video, I am going to look at walking through a course and a little bit of how you navigate my courses on Brightspace. So what we're going to take a look at here is just one of my classes. And I'm going to look at a template for one of them. And it applies pretty much to any class I teach. You may see some slight variations. And if there's any questions, always feel free to reach out to me. So when you log into the course and select your course there, you will see the course homepage. There's some notifications up here where you can access your email, you can access a chat function, and you can see if there are other notifications or updates that are coming up. You'll also see the course navigation bar here. And for my class, what you really need are two buttons here. You need these two. You need the content and you need the grades. Grades you need literally just for grades. That will show you your grades in the class. Everything else that you need is in content. There's no need to go search any place for anything that you need for the class. Everything is within the content modules. Some of the others do have some uh, uses if you want to use some of the things under the other under the other bars there. I leave them there for you, but there's no need that you have to use anything other than these for the class. You'll also always see a course banner, which is updated with the current lesson or lessons that we are covering in the class. And you'll see the class news here. The class news is any announcements that I make. If there's changes to a schedule, uh, they will be posted in the class news. So do follow that. And they'll also be posted in the class announcements discussion board. Updates are posted here. That could have be any upcoming quizzes, any unread discussion posts. Those will show in this section as to what you may need to look at. Now, as I said, most everything you need is through content. So let's take a look at that first. When you click on content, it will open up your content browser. And everything that you need, again, is right here. This will show each lesson in the course. Now, you won't be able to access all of them at once. In fact, when you first log into the course, all you can access are these very first two modules. That is it. The other ones will, may show, but you won't have anything in them that you can access yet. So that doesn't mean that you're so anything's wrong. It simply means you've got to go through the first modules in order to access the next ones. So let's take a quick look at those. And what we have, if we look at our introduction module, has a lot of information that you need here. Very general information, including the course syllabus, is in the very first module. These three contain information on various assignments that extend over the semester, including the article reviews, our semester observations project, and semester observations of the moon and constellations in the evenings. So those are things that you can take, you can take a look at now and you can get started on because they may not be due right away, but some of them require some work over the course of the semester before they're actually due. If you want the exact due dates, go to your syllabus. It will show you in which lesson they are. Your first assignments of each of these will be due. Last here, I have a link for some math, uh, for some of the math in the course. So it has some videos and information about different things in terms of math that we will use. It's not at a very high level, but there's just if you want to review anything on things like significant figures that we'll look at in the very first lesson or other areas that you're not as familiar with, you can see them and they'll be exactly as they tie into this course. Now, at the end of this, there is a checklist. You need to complete this checklist and you have to do that in order to access the next lesson. So once you complete the syllabus checklist, you can jump and access lesson one. However, you may not want to do that. If you want to get a little more familiar with the course, you'll see that I have a practice lesson here. Now, the practice lesson is broken down just as an ordinary lesson would would be. And that is that there is a set of lecture materials links to any needed discussions and links to any assignments and then a checklist at the end noting what needed to be done. So you can go through and review for example the assignments for this. Let's take a quick look at those and here we have for example that there is a practice submission to a Dropbox, a quiz and a lab quiz that you can do just to get a feel for what things are like in the course. 
These are not required. You can ignore the practice lesson altogether if you feel comfortable with this. However, if you do complete everything in the practice lesson, and that means posting to the discussion board, posting to the Dropbox, doing the quizzes, and completing the checklist, there is another module that will appear which gives you a chance for a couple of extra credit points. So you don't have to do that, but you're welcome to if you want a few extra credit points to get the class started. Now, once you've done that syllabus checklist, that's the key one, that will open lesson one for you. So when you open lesson one, you're going to see that it's structured exactly the same. So here's the information about it. And there's a link to the syllabus checklist. If you forgot, if you hadn't completed the syllabus checklist, you will be locked out right here. Nothing else will be visible for you. So everything else is hidden until you complete that checklist. Once you do, you'll be able to access things like the lecture materials. So here you'll see lecture materials, including the readings, the lecture slides, and a video playlist. So as an example, you can click on the video playlist here and that will take you to you open the link and that will take you to YouTube and show you the playlist. This is what these are the videos that you'd want to watch for lesson one. So it gives you a chance to see those and look at the videos that are there and watch my ex explanation of the various parts of the chapter. Now, so that's one way to that's the way to access the lecture materials. If we want to look at the discussion materials, discussions are here. And you'll see that we'll have several different types of discussions. There may or may not be a graded discussion in this lesson. There happens to be one. There is also a APOD photo of the day discussion that we do each week. That is optional. I do give extra credit for those at the end of the semester. But if you choose not to do them, you can ignore those and they will not have a negative effect on your grade otherwise. There's also three general discussions that you'll see each time. Class announcements I post to with anything that has maybe updated or changed or if there was any issue or anything I had to correct I will post announcements there so please follow that. These will also be posted on the class news on the home page that I showed before. This is for questions about the class or assignments. Click on that and you can open up the class discussion board for those. You can ask a question of me or of the class if someone else may be able to give you an answer. And that does give you the option to post anonymously. And I will clarify that anonymously means anonymously to your classmates. If I want to, I can look, click and look and see who actually posted it. My policy is not to do that unless there is a compelling reason to do so. And then there's off topic. If you want to discuss something else like a movie you've seen or a book you've read, you can share that with the class here. Now, the last section that we have is the assignments. So you may have a discussion assignment within discussions. Assignments show here and they will have various different things. You will see this each time there is a 48 hour extension. That is a one time no questions asked extension that you can have. Uh, you can only use it once in the semester. Once you use it, it's gone. So you have one chance to use that if you'd ever need extra time on an assignment. Again, I recommend saving it for a big assignment. Uh, I give you reminders of the observing assignments every single lesson so you know that they're coming. If you're not sure with anything on them, please reach out to me. In this case, we have a lab and lab one on the scientific methods. This is the instruction section. So you can click on the instructions and that will show you the instructions for the scientific methods lab. It will give you some links. Uh, there's a video that I give you here. There's the instruction sheet for the lab and there is an answer sheet for the lab, which is what you'll be submitting. And you submit that when you take the lab quiz. Make sure you do the instructions first and you go through the lab before starting the lab quiz because the first question on the lab quiz is going to ask you to submit your completed worksheet. So if the worksheet isn't done, you're not going to have time to do the worksheet and the lab quiz at the same time. Now, then there is an extra credit opportunity here that you can do as well. Again, it's extra credit, so it's optional. You don't need to do it if you do not want to. And finally, at the end of each lesson, you find a checklist. So there's a checklist for lesson one, which really just reminds you of everything that was due in lesson one that you should have done. And once you check that out, 
you would then have access to lesson two. Now, in my class, you can work up to a week ahead. So if you finish up lesson one early and you complete that checklist, you can go ahead and get started on lesson two. However, you can't complete lesson two real quick and start lesson three. I only let you work one week ahead because I don't want everybody at widely varying places in the class. I don't want one student working on lesson three while another one is zipped ahead to lesson 10. It just makes it harder to keep track of everything. But you can work one lesson ahead, which is hopefully helpful. If you know you're going to have a really busy week, you can try to work ahead a little bit. Now, that's really all that you need for those. So that's everything that you need. We could take a quick look at the others just to show you. So so for example, if you click on grades, it will show you grades for any assignments. I won't do that here because it's this is under my version, uh, instructor version, so it won't show quite the same. What else might you use? Well, under communication, you may have used to see th various things, or if you want to use the pager to send messages, you can go directly to the class newsfeed or email that you can also access elsewhere. Under general links, there are a few things here that you won't see. In fact, those top three are only are only going to not not going to be visible to you. But you can access the discussions, the drop boxes and the quizzes directly if you want to here. Although for so many cases, you need to go through the content in order to access all of the instructions for these or even to access the files. So sometimes they're good if you need to go back to one afterwards. But for the most part, you really don't need those as everything is really included in those that content link. So that really concludes this video as uh, to, to course navigation uh, on my classes. Please always feel free to reach out with any questions if you are unsure of everything. And until next time, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.